All right, good afternoon, everyone. We'll take questions for Avalanche head coach, Jared Bednar. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Jared. Um, going into the last, well, first of all, uh, obviously I wanna ask about Nate and if he's playing here tonight. And then if you could also go through, since it's the last week of the regular season, what the status is for Gerard, Saad, and Byram. And then obviously uh, at some point, Calvert and OC, as well as uh, Dubnik's availability when he's going to come back. Okay, so Nate's in tonight. Um, the injured guys, all those guys are back at home. So it's uh, Gerard and Saad are skating along with Byram. Um, is on the ice some days and not others. I think uh, Gerard's probably the guy that's um, closest to return. Um, Saad is back home skating and, and, and working out. He's still uh, got a little bit of time left to go. And, um, you know, Calvert and OC are still long term. So they're not in, they're not in the foreseeable future for us uh, being ready to get back into the lineup. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Jared. Um, I saw the league relax COVID restrictions for teams with a, a more than 85% of players fully vaccinated. Do you guys fall under, have, have more than 85% of you gotten vaccinated and will you be able to take advantage of those looser restrictions? Yes. Yeah, okay. we have. We have um, more than 85% of our team is vaccinated. Adrian Dater, Colorado Hockey Now. Uh, coach, uh, here in Vegas, uh, with you guys, uh, I think last night was the first time you guys were maybe able to go out as a team. Uh, can you, without asking what details, uh, do you guys enjoy a fun night out finally as a team? No, it's actually those restrict <laughs> those uh, restrictions don't get lifted until the start of the playoffs. So we're still under the same restrictions we've been under all year. Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, Jared, uh, three games left. Obviously, this one's the one you guys had circled on your calendars for a little while. Just what's the energy like this morning during morning skate? And kind of what are you expecting tonight from Vegas? Probably the biggest game, you know, left this season. I expect them to be the exact same as us, pushing to uh, try to win the hockey game and, and trying to get home ice. I think obviously that's the, been the goal from from us all year and, and I'm sure from them as well. And uh you know, it's, it's an important uh, piece to, you know, tool to have in your, uh, on your side come playoff time. So uh, we wouldn't be in this position if we hadn't taken care of business in, in the last few games. And we've done a nice job of that. And we're still in striking distance and control our own destiny here as far as where we're going to end up seeding. So uh, I expect our team to play real hard. It was a little quiet this morning. Uh, I think real good focus, though, and, you know, guys understand the importance of the game. So it's, you, could, you could tell it was just a little bit of a different feeling in, with our team here this morning, both in the room and on the ice. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, I saw that uh, Sampo Ranto was added to the taxi squad. Uh, number one, I know the uh, Eagles were on the road. I think they were on, in Ontario in California. Was he able to join you guys, and is he with you now? And, and number two, is he someone that you uh, foresee potentially using in the next three games? So he is here. Uh, he came up with a couple other guys, and, and um, part of that is uh, travel back to, to make sure those guys are available for us. Um, they fly with us and travel with us and have, haven't been on a commercial flight for a while than their options. And I've, I haven't thought that far ahead as far as uh, if he's going to see our lineup or not. I mean, we have uh, some tough decisions to make already with our lineup up front. So uh, I guess time will tell on that one. Michael Spencer, CBS4. Hey, Jared, obviously there's a lot of talk about home ice and home ice advantage, but I'm just wondering, given, given limited capacity at home ice, arenas given the fact that you guys have played your division opponents eight times why is it still so important and why do you think it will still mean so much obviously there's some schematic advantages there too I, I don't think it's the be all end all um, but I think for me the importance of it is our home record and how we've played at home and and how our guys feel when they're at home and, and the type of game that we play I think it's been outstanding um, and that's not exclusive to us. I think if you look at Vegas's home record, you look at uh, many, what they've done at home, there's big swings in, in home and road. 
I think that um, the reason that we want home ice more so than anything is because it was a goal that we set out for at the start of the season to, to try to give ourselves every advantage. And whether that advantage is big or small, we'd like to be able to take advantage of that in, in any way we can come playoff time. And um, I think it's always good to, to push for short-term goals and long-term goals. And we've played 53 games now, and we've put ourselves in a position to uh, achieve that goal. And if we can do that, I think it's fantastic. It's a, it's a feather in, in whichever team gets it, it's a feather in their cap. And, and then you're moving on to uh, the postseason. Again, I don't think it's the be all end all, but I think um, if you can accomplish goals like that, it says something about your team. Rick Sadowski, NHL.com. Hi, Jared. Um, I'm wondering, you know, players are obviously going to get pretty ramped up for a big game like this. I wonder if there's anything you can do as a coach to try to help them, <clears throat> excuse me, control their emotions. And do coaches get kind of excited about a game like this as well? Yeah, I think everyone is. And, and, um, you know, it's a focus thing for me. If our team's focused and we play with the right level of determination and competitiveness, um, when you're focused, your intensity will be good. Your execution will be good. Um, I don't want them to be scared of the moment. I want them to go out and, and play our game and, 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 and dictate the pace of play and the way the game is played. Uh, but the game has to be played with emotion and passion and, and fire. And I think that that's something that I don't try to, you know, diminish on our team or curb from from the way we approach the game I, I want our guys to play that way as long as we're staying disciplined you know I, I think that the, the more energy and and passion you bring to the game the better we'll take two more here for Jared Evan Rall DNBR hey coach I uh, joined late so sorry if this has been asked but you got a few look a uh, few games to look at Alex Nuha can you got a few more games um Based on what you've seen, um, assuming, you know, you might have health issues, things like that, but is he somebody you would feel comfortable using in the postseason based on what you've seen so far? I think too early to tell yet. I think he's gotten uh, slightly better in all three of the games he's played, so I think that's good. Um, he's been a responsible player defensively. I don't think it's, it's too much for him, so I think that – uh, he could be an option for us. You know, it just depends on how he plays and how some of the other guys plays play that we got to make decisions on. Last one here, Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Jared, uh, two things. Briefly, uh, Byram, I was wondering if there's any update on him. And then also Val Nachushkin was the, I guess, the team's rep or nominee for the Mastered. And I guess what does that say about his journey and, and the, I guess, effort he's taken to get to this point? I think real good story there. You know, he's drafted high, he comes out of uh, uh, or turns pro as a highly touted prospect. He, he, you know, he goes through some some ups. I think getting in the league right away, and then some downs, and where where he went a whole year and, and, and had a tough time scoring, and then back and and now change of scenery with a new team, earns more opportunity, and has become an extremely valuable player for us. And in, in in the time he's been with us and a guy that we rely on heavily in a lot of different areas. And, um, you know, he's always up there with the, the, um, you know, tops in the league and shot suppression and the way he checks and, and it's impressive game that he's been playing for us as a big man and he can chip in offensively as well. So we're pretty impressed with what he's done here and might not be a, a huge uh, NHL story, but, I think for us, we're very appreciative of, of what he does for our team, and, and, and we recognize that it's, uh, it's consistent, solid play on a nightly basis, and, and we rely on that heavily. Uh, and I, as far as Bo Byram goes, I don't really have any uh, major update to tell you. He's still working on getting back and getting ready to play. All right. Thank you, Jared. All right. Thank you. We'll take questions for Avalanche forward Pierre Edouard Belmar. Why are you laughing, Sean? I wasn't laughing. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hi, Pierre. What's, uh, I guess, your general outlook going into big game tonight against your former team and the first place team in the division? Uh, I mean, fun. Those are, the, those are the, the reason why you play hockey. 
really those big games. So um, excited. Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, PE. Um, obviously, this is a game that, you know, since the COVID break, you guys have had circled on your calendar. Just when you look at the locker room this morning, what's the energy like? What's the mood like? Jared said it was a little bit quiet, so everyone seems really focused. Uh, yeah, I can I can agree with that a little bit. Uh, I mean, like you said, I think it's it's been marked on the calendar for a while, and we know that would have come down to this one, so we are really excited. Uh, it's a big game. I think it's too... To a decent team, so and I think we're gonna go at it. So uh, no, uh, like I said, it's really exciting. A little bit quiet in the in the locker room, but uh, I mean we are a few hours from the start, so I'm not worried about that. Peter Ba, the Athletic. Yeah, Pierre uh, Val Matushkin is the Avs uh, nominee for the Masterton Trophy for perseverance, and I was just wondering what you've seen from him and his journey to to get to this point. Well, I mean a lot of. A lot of consistency in his in his uh, approach to the game, the way he, you know, uh, wants to keep having his days of work, regardless of the schedule and regardless of the amount of games and when we come at night. The guy is always there doing his extra, and this is what my son has done. You know, he's had a a season where he's had a hard time to score, and then out of that, he comes. He just keeps trusting himself, do his thing, and then come out as strong as ever. So, uh, well deserved. All right. Thank you, Pierre. Appreciate it. My pleasure. All right. We'll take questions for Avalanche Captain Gabriel Landeskog. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey, Gabe. Uh, you grind out the, the four points in, in uh, L.A. without Nate, and then you get him back here tonight. I would think that that's going to maybe serve as a spark for you. Yeah, I think so. I mean, when you get your top player and, you know, top player in the league back, that's definitely going to uh, benefit your team, I think. So uh, I'm proud of the way we worked in L.A. It's a uh, it, it, They're almost different hockey games because of the systems they play, and, and we were able to really put our put our – heads down and, and, and get dirty and get to work and, and, and grind out the four points, like you said. Um, I also don't think that maybe the results were as reflective of, of the games as uh, as uh, it sometimes is, but nonetheless, it was big points and it's good to have Nate back. I'm glad he's he's feeling good enough to play and, and uh, yeah, it's important for us that he's healthy. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hi, Gabe. Um, what did you think of how Tyson Jost did filling in in the top center role with Nate out? I thought he did great. You know, Josie's he's been really, really good the last two months or so. And, and he's just, you can tell he's gaining that confidence and he's really been, been playing, uh, playing really well for us. And he's been a big contributor on any line he's been on and, and really been driving, um, you know, his line. And, and I think he did a great job with, you know, stepping in for Nate. And those are big shoes to fill, but I think Josie's just focused on playing his game and, and not trying to be anything he's not. So, uh, he plays a lot of speed. He's strong on the puck um, and, and made some nice plays. And, and uh, you know, he's been playing really well, like I said. So uh, it's important that guys can step in and fill roles. Michael Spencer, CBS4. Hey, Gabe, can you put into words from a player's perspective what it would mean for you guys to get home ice through the first two rounds of the playoffs and, and to obviously keep that goal alive with a win tonight? Yeah, that would be important. Uh, I mean, no doubt it, it helps with matchups. It helps with, you know, establishing home eyes early on in the series and, and uh, hopefully take a strong grip of that series right off the bat. But but as well as game seven, I mean, we know game sevens are makes a big difference when they're on the road or they're at home. So uh, no doubt that would be uh, that'd be a big win tonight. And, and for us, that's our goal. We're trying to trying to make it happen and, and try to make sure we finish strong here and take care of what we can do last three games. Rick Sadowski, NHL.com. Hey, Gabe. Um, you've obviously played in big games before. In terms of regular season, is this as big as they get? And also, how do you maintain, I guess, your, not try to get too jacked up and not let that affect your play? I mean, listen, this is, yeah, it's a big game, but it's not by any means the biggest we've played in the regular season. We played, you know, if you, Zoom out, we're clinched, 
this is just a matter of, uh, of obviously we want to win the division. Don't get me wrong, but um, it's, uh, you know, I think game 82 against St. Louis at home a few years ago was a little bit bigger than this one. And, and for that, at, you know, at that point we're playing for our playoff lives. And um, so I, I think the way we approach this one is go out and play and compete and, and have that same mindset we've had the last few games this time of year. We, we have to crank up the intensity, uh, really make sure our habits are strong going into the playoffs and the compete level has to be up. And, and that's the way we're going to have to approach this one. We know they're an opportunistic team. We know they're, they've got a lot of firepower and they can, you know, they defend well. Um, so we know it's going to be a tight, tight match and, and uh, we're excited for it. Um, no doubt. Pat Graham, Associated Press. Hey, Gabe, thanks for uh, taking the time. Um, I guess you've seen for years how good Groovy can be when he's healthy. I guess, how has he taken him to the next level? I mean, he's among the lead of the elite right now. Have you seen anything differently in him? Uh, you know, he's, I don't know from a goalie perspective, uh, exactly what he's doing different, but I feel like he's competing really well. He's super calm in there, uh, not giving up a whole lot of rebounds. Uh, you know, he's kind of swallowing everything. That's a routine shot. Uh, and then he's, he's made some crazy saves on top of that this year. So he's, he's really elevated his game and, and, and been that kind of anchor back there that we need. Um, and obviously, I think our defensemen and our whole, you know, five-man unit on the ice have done a good job of, of making sure things are from the outside, and, and Gruby can see most of the shots. So, um, but he's been one of our best players all year, and, and uh, you know, hopefully, we can continue to play well in front of him. And um, yeah, it's fun to see. We'll take two more here for Gabe, Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Gabe, looking at you uh, reminds me of uh, Ian LaPerriere or Adam Foote with that nose. Um, it's, uh, it looks like it's heading the, uh, uh, a little to the right. Is it broken or, uh, and are you able to uh, breathe okay and everything? Yeah, I'm able to breathe all right. It, it actually happened last year and the end of the season last year, right before the COVID break in Detroit, broke my nose and, and, uh, try to set it back. We couldn't really get it back to, to neutral. So uh, it, it'll probably be something that's uh, being taken care of in either the off season or post career. We'll see. Uh, I was actually sitting at breakfast yesterday with, with Berkey and he, <laughs> he made a uh, observation that he was just staring at me and I was looking at him. I'm like, what are you looking at? And he's like, your nose is super crooked lately. <laughs> so it's just one of those things. And I think with a couple of scratches and things on it, it, uh, it brings people's attention to it. So, um, but thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Thanks for your concern. <laughs> but I'm all right. Peter Baugh, the athletic. Yeah, Gabe, a little off topic, but Paul Stasny is set to play his 1,000th game tomorrow. I was wondering, do you have a, a favorite Paul Stasny memory or story that comes to mind? Uh, I don't know if there's anything I want to share on here, but I think overall, Paulie was one of the guys that when I came in, uh, he was one of the guys that took care of me as a, as a young rookie and, and uh, really took me under his wing. And I just kind of observed him and how he handled himself and, and how he how he approached the game. And, and Paulie's he was able to, off the ice, he was able to relax and, and have fun with his teammates. And, and uh, then when it came to game time, he was still a student of the game and worked really hard and worked on his game. Um, and we've been, We've seen him over the last few years, you know, play with division rivals and, and conference rivals that, you know, he's still an elite player in my opinion. And, and he not fancy or flashy, but uh, really one of those players that um, makes his line mates better, makes his teammates better. So I'm super happy for Paulie and um, really excited for him. All right. Thank you, Gabe. Thanks, guys.